I am so glad you are here. Thank you for coming. Thank you. Thank you so much. Your favorite client at Southwestern screamed in excitement as if you were coming to take her away to a faraway land. I guess that's because she thought you were. Alina Ocker is an 85-year-old woman who has been residing at the Southwestern facility for approximately three years on hospice services. Nobody ever thought that she would make it this far since she was dealing with congestive heart failure and leukemia. She is a short, frail woman. Her skin is very wrinkly and cold. Touching her hand could be compared to walking into a freezer. You notice she is very worked up, as if she has been holding in a large secret that she has been waiting to tell you. You see now at the end that there are two options. There is one, talk to Alina, or two, is she crazy, I'm out of here. I'm going to give Alina the benefit of the doubt and I'm going to talk to her. Talk to Alina. Alina, why do you keep thanking me? I haven't done anything worth being thanked for. Not yet, but I know you will. Come close. I have to tell you a story. A little closer. Closer. Okay, that's too close. Perfect. Now listen. The people here, they, they just aren't treating me right. They aren't giving me my medications when they are supposed to. They are not bathing me. Don't you smell that? It's not the bathroom, and it's not the gross food they serve me. It's my body. It just smells like death. They think because I'm an old hag that I'm not coherent. But boy, are they wrong. I need your help. We need to get out of here. Today. Now. We are going to Punta Cana. I would need your help to get some of my things together. Now my clothes are in the closet. I have two pairs of shoes under the bed. One pair of slippers in my drawer. And a beautiful necklace that my daughter left me before she passed away. My money? Oh wait. I don't have any of that. That's okay. I'll make do. They have bags all around this place. We can take it all and get going. What are you waiting for? Stop giving me that look. Let's go. Thank you. I have the option to either follow Alina's orders or further discuss the issue with Alina. I think I'm going to talk to her a little bit more about what she's doing here. Alina, slow it down. Isn't there a different way that we can work the issue rather than pack your bags and leave? Where would you go? Who would take care of you? So many questions come about, and it is entirely uneth unethical for me to... Oh, don't hit me with that bullshit, kid. I was your age before. You have the power, the energy. You have potential to change my life right now. Aren't hospice services about making the end of life as comfortable as possible? What is as comfortable as possible for me is Punta Cana. Help me. We have to go. I'll buy your ticket. No, I won't. I don't have any money. Er, uh, you can buy my ticket. I'll pay you back handsomely someday. Maybe. If I don't die first. Who am I kidding? I'm not gonna die. Not now. Not ever. You have to trust me on this. You do trust me, right? You told me you did. So you have to trust me on this one. You'll make me the happiest old lady alive. I'll get treated how I deserve to. I would live on an island and make do with what is around me. I'm not getting any medication here, so what's the difference if I'm not getting any there, right? Unethical, unschmethical. I promise that I won't get you caught with this. Nobody will ever know it were you. I promise. It'll be okay. So, now I have two more options. Do I tell Elena I cannot grant her request or follow her orders? I'm going to choose to follow her orders. As a social worker, this is such a risk for you. But just think, Punta Cana. And with your favorite client, whom you have formed quite a bond with, Elena's situation is pretty overwhelming. All she wants is happiness. You want to make sure that she gets that in any way possible. So if it's Punta Cana she wants, then Punta Cana it is. You know it is necessary to get her out as quick as possible, but you both have to conjure up some sort of plan. You walk around Southwestern looking for bags to put Alina's items into, trying to think about how in the world you are going to get away with this one. You find a little closet full of little black duffel bags. It seems like they knew you were coming for one, but maybe you were just thinking too deep into it. You grab one and head back to Alina's room and put her shoes, slippers, clothes, and necklace into the bag. Alina gets out of bed to get ready. She's so excited that you're ready to take such a huge step for her, and she's ready to tell you what to do next. You see here that you do not have the option of making choice number one or choice number two. Because since you have chosen to follow Alina's orders, she is now going to tell you what to do next.
Alina, now what? Okay, dear, listen closely. I have been thinking this one out for quite some time. Sorry. For quite some time. It's 9.55 now. At 10 o'clock every Tuesday and Thursday, the managers have a meeting in the very back of the facility. The workers will see you are the social worker and think nothing of your actions. This is already working out perfectly. Yes. Yes. They will probably think you are taking me outside for air or something. And since it's you, we will be okay. The other workers up front are just, are just aides. They are not going to question you at all. You have more power than they do. Remember that. Where are you, Park Deary? That's going to play a role in our escape, too. You are listening very closely to Alina trying to take all of this in. I am parked literally right in front of the door, Alina. There's no way this is going to... Excellent. We can sign me out to go to a doctor's appointment. It's early. They shouldn't think much of it. Then, we actually do go to the doctor's and sign in and leave. So that there is proof that you took me there. I don't want any of this to fall back on you, sweetie. It shouldn't, but we have to take all the necessary steps to make sure it doesn't. Alina's plan seems absurd, but it seems to be all that you both have at the moment. Again, you see that there is no choice of option one or two. You are still following Alina's plan. You slowly walk Alina towards the door around 10.05 a.m. Your heart is pounding and it's starting to become harder to breathe. Is there something wrong with the air in here? Nope, just you. Keep on walking. You get to the door and you look around a thousand times in hopes that nobody knows what you are doing. What will people think of you? Does it matter at this point? Sigh. You open the door and help Alina outside. Once the door closed behind you, you look at her. She took a huge breath of relief. She felt free. She hasn't felt this way in ages, especially with the way she was being treated at Southwestern. Once you arrive to your car, you open the door for her and make sure that she gets in okay. You get into the driver's seat and buckle the both of you up. This is it. There is no turning back now. You have officially made the decision to go on with this. This is going to be one hell of a journey, so remain prepared. You have the option to either sign a lean out at the doctor's or head for the airport. I'm just going to head straight for the airport. The airport is approximately two hours away from Southwestern. It is going to be a long drive for the two of you, so time to check up on the essentials. Gas? Check. Money? Check. Passports? Check. Alright, so far so good. Time to turn on some soft music and enjoy the ride. Elena is already fast asleep in the passenger seat. How did that ride go so smoothly? There is no time to question it. You slowly wake Elena up to tell her that you have arrived at the airport. She seems confused. She doesn't exactly know why she's there. She looks at you and asks who you are. What? Why? Where are my medications? Nurse? Nurse! Why am I even trying to call? Nobody ever comes for me anyways. Elena breaks out into tears. You sit back staring at her, wondering where this emotional outburst had came from. But, remember, you are still a social worker. This is your situation, too. You rub Elena on her arm and try explaining to her everything that she is, to her everything that is going on. She pulls something from inside of her shirt, puts it into her mouth, closes her eyes for about ten seconds, and then stares at you with a smile. That's better. Okay, let's get going, kiddo. What did Elena just pull out of her shirt? Why was she so secretive about it? What was it? Does it matter, or should I just go with the flow?